Hi everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Thank you so much for being here today. Hope that you're doing great. Uh, welcome to this brand new day of your life. I hope that all is well. Now, if you are new to our channel, I wanna welcome you and uh, encourage you to please subscribe to the channel. Please uh, press the subscribe button and also the notification bell. I upload four videos a week and they are produced here on YouTube. So you uh, get a notification when they are published and I really welcome you here. This is a community for women over 50, 60, 70, 80, who are really just trying to live their lives in the most beautiful and purposeful way as they get a little older. Challenging times, but it's a time for assessing who we are, coming into our own. This is our time. I truly do believe that. But I have an article today and a topic I want to talk to you about that's a little bit more frivolous than some of the things that we normally talk about. It was um, an article written by Candace Johnson, one of our bloggers, and she posed a very significant question. And that question was, are you a sapiosexual sexagenarian? I have to look at my notes to make sure I'm repeating the question correctly. And this is a very valid question. Now, as you're over 60 years old, you are a sex sexagenarian. That is what we are referred to, sexagenarian. And if you're a sapiosexual sex, um, sexagenarian, you have a tendency to be attracted to men who are intelligent or to people who are intelligent. Now I'm gonna broaden the scope of Candace's article here because she kind of starts off with a conversation about, yes, we certainly love the sexy, you know, sort of a silver fox man with the, you know, fit body and, um, you know, just visually st stunning appearance. Um, I wanna say George Clooney, but he's actually very, um, <laughs> Who wouldn't? He, he is, you know, to me, a very intelligent man as well. So maybe he's not quite the example. But, you know, she says, yes, of course, we are attracted as human beings to beauty and, you know, to, and to people that look and, and you know, stimulate us that way. But their real love in her life, and it played out with her husband, as she talks about, and also probably with most of the people in your lives, if you are a sapiosexual sexagenarian, is that you love their mind first their intelligence, their their creativity, their willingness to push you uh, in conversation, to challenge, to encourage, to think, a thinker. Now, I know for sure in my life that has always been the type of men that I have been attracted to. And not just as, as partners or as, you know, just really close, uh, in close relationships, but people who just I got together with, people that I, my friends, the men who are friends in my life are people who just think, they're thinkers, they, they love a good conversation, they love to uh, you know, what, read books or read articles or, have, or be involved and engaged in the world. They are sapio. So the word sapio um, is actually a Greek word, I think, it was, or is a Latin word. Sapio is a Latin verb, which means to be wise. So it's a wise man. It's a, it's a man who likes to make you think and laugh and talk um, with an inquisitive and a kind of, in, uh, you know, in, in, in curious mind. Is that, what about you? Am I, gonna, am I going off on a tangent here that's not of interest to you? Are you a sapiosexual woman? <laughs> I mean, yes, we can be, as I said, attracted to the physical, but really the, the heart of hearts is that you are looking for wisdom and a wise human being, a wise man or woman. I mean, it's just the people that you love. It's the, the person that you love has to have a creative and, and thoughtful mind, a wise mind. Someone who makes you laugh, laugh and think. And in a way, it's that complete uh, coming together of you know the body and mind. It's that, that type of human being. Or I mean, maybe share your experience. I know we've written articles about being attracted to the, you know, the bad boys, the ones that are just looking good and you know having fun and exciting. But then there's also a lot of conversation about, you know, long-term partnerships that really are built on that kind of a sapio wisdom attraction. Um, now, I, I actually must admit that I, I was thinking about this as I was reading the article, and this is probably more information than uh, you know you need to know. But I was always attracted to my professors, to my teachers at school. Never did anything about it, but you know it's like I just always felt attracted to them. I was intrigued, and maybe that's why I like going to school so much. Even when I was younger, I really got um, you know sort of turned on by people that were thinking and and connecting things and and talking about history and culture and architecture and. Um, um, archaeology and you know, just about life. And also as I got older, people that were 
challenging norms, you know, talking about uh, concepts broadly. Like instead of just taking one point of view saying, well, let's talk about this, but also let's consider the, the alternative point. And for me, that was totally sexy. That was totally interesting. And I just found myself drawn to those people and attracted to those people. I'm a lover of knowledge and maybe you are too. But Candace says that she was a lover of knowledge and she, um, I think she got, I, I didn't get the whole story, but I think she, it was her second marriage or a, a, a later in life relationship. She's been married for 10 years now. So, and I know she's in her fifties or sixties. So she was probably either divorced or this was another or a later relationship. She just didn't get married young. But anyway, she went to a class, an evening class, and she met a man who was there too, learning. It was just that sapio, you know, that sort of uh, that um, desire to learn and to grow and be wise. And so she said she was always attracted to, to him and they ended up, you know, sp spending time together and then they got married. <clears throat> and for 10 years, she says, they've been really perfectly matched because they were drawn to each other on the intelligent level rather than just on the physical level. Are you relating to this? I know a lot of women in our 60 and Me community who are 60, got out of high school when they were 18, 19. And the thing to do then was to get married, you know, and, and the guys that they were, you know, that we married, I, I didn't, I didn't marry that young, but many of you did, were the ones that we were attracted to. They were in the swim team. They were on the football team. You were the cheerleader, you know, is whatever the roles were that you played when you were young, they were certainly more physical and more based on status and what the guy was doing and how maybe how much money he had or I don't know what he had a nice car. You know, the physical things, the external things. But we weren't so interested perhaps in looking at the the human being, the person behind that, you know, the intelligence or the culture or you know, just the, the interests of that person. And we just were drawn to the physical. And then maybe that didn't last so long. I don't know, but um, she says, you know, things that they've discussed as a husband and wife are not just, you know, the, the pay the bills and buy the house and whatever else you need to do practically, but it's like, what were your childhood dreams? You know, what did you want to do when you were a child that you haven't done yet? How can I help you to do that? And you're someone that takes your, your story and wants to know more, you know, just tell me more. That's interesting. Gosh, that, I mean, let me make a connection there. Someone, a man who uses his brain, uses his mind. I'm probably going to get all kinds of comments here on this video. But anyway, it's more about the idea of who you are, not about the, the nature of the guys, like who kind of people that you are attracted to. Um, so where do you find these people? <laughs> I was thinking to myself, okay, where do you find these people? Well, of course, you go to evening classes. You go online to uh, workshops. Everything's virtual now. So you go to uh, sessions that are discussing a topic that is, um, you know, medieval history or, you know, the study of science and discovery of bio, uh, you know, biology and chemistry. There's everything under the sun. And you can meet people on these uh, courses. They're very kind of anonymous because they're virtual, but they have um, focus groups and chat rooms and you know, you can find people there. When things open up a bit and we can go out into the world, there are libraries and bookstores and um, workshops and TED Talks and conferences and get togethers where, you know, we are guided more by our intellect and by our desire to learn and grow and enrich our lives than we are on finding, you know, a sexy partner. Although there's no harm in looking for that too. I mean, we've got to be attracted to the people that we spend our time with. And this includes men and women in our lives. We've got to find them interesting and beautiful. And I keep thinking though, is, I don't know why this is coming into my mind and it's totally inappropriate, but why I keep thinking of someone like uh, George Clooney or Shah Rukh Khan, who to me is like, a, I don't know what it is about Shah Rukh Khan. He's an Indian actor. I just find him so physically attractive. Um, and, and he's not even that handsome in that sense, but he's, um, and, I, and I at first thought, oh, I always like to watch movies like Bollywood films with him in them just to see how he, because he's just so cute. But, um, but then, <laughs> anyway, but then I actually saw him interviewed and he's got a wife and family, of course, and, you know, he's a very, very smart man, you know, gets it politically, socially, culturally. He's just a very intelligent man to, to listen to. So I thought, oh, that was probably why it was, there was an interest. It wasn't so much just his, he, that he was handsome. It was something more that you could sense in that person, that they were a thinker. So are you attracted to in intelligent people? Is that one of the things that you're drawn to? 
I, I really would love to know that, you know, does intellectual stimulation fire you up? You know, is it something that really uh, connects with you somehow? And if you're, a, a, what is it, a sexagenarian is 60. If you're 70, it's a septuagenarian. So I'm a septuagenarian. I'm 72. So I'm a septuagenarian as opposed to a sexagenarian. <laughs> but I'm a sapio for sure. I'm a thinker. How about you? Thanks a lot for listening to this kind of crazy conversation. I hope it was interesting and fun. I really just put it out there because um, I, I enjoyed the article by Candice and I just felt it was interesting, worthy of conversation. So leave your comments below. Are you a septagenarian, sapio, sexagenarian? Do, do you like intelligent people? Thanks everybody for listening. I hope that you have a great day wherever you are. Take good care of yourselves and we'll talk again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.